All right. Hi, everyone. Thanks for um, joining the podcast today, um, the Philly Autism Advocacy Podcast. Um, let me just put this on the screen for everyone. Um, I like to have these podcasts because I'm starting a petition or I started a petition to start a public school for children with uh, autism in Philadelphia. So um, that's what this podcast is primarily for. But today I'm very excited. Um, I have a special guest on here today. We have Kelly. Um, hi. hi, Kelly. So uh, Kelly was diagnosed actually with epilepsy when um, she was six years old. And I feel like this is very important to have someone like Kelly on here to talk to people like me and parents like me, because my son was diagnosed with um, having epilepsy. So when he was actually diagnosed with having epilepsy before he was diagnosed with having autism. So I was able to kind of learn a lot about that first, um, but not, not enough in my opinion to really feel like I know what's going on. Um, so yeah, so we have Kelly here with us. Hi. And yes, so um, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about um, Austin's epilepsy, and then we're going to get right into um, asking our questions um, to Kelly. So um, Austin is four, year old, four years old. He's my son, and he was diagnosed with having epilepsy last September. Um, he stopped breathing in the middle of the night in July of last year, and that kind of sparked us seeing everyone. So we saw genetic specialists, cardiologists, neurologists, and once we got to the neurologist, they did, you know, the EEGs, EKGs, mm -hmm. all the things that they need to do, found out that he had yeah. epilepsy. Yeah, so in September, I found out he had epilepsy. Um, and from there, I've pretty much been learning about diet, um, medication, just different things to help. And he has absence and um, focal seizures. So for him, mm -hmm. he can have them throughout the day and no one would know because he'll just kind of blank out. Um, so for him, he can just be in the car and just kind of go like, you know, like that. But he did have a, a huge seizure at school on Wednesday, and that one, his eyes were rolling in the back of the head. And in my opinion, that was the biggest seizure he's really ever had. I've never really seen a seizure like that. Um, so I do know that there are different triggers for seizures. Like I know when, if he's dehydrated or if he's like really hungry, his behavior, that may trigger it. Um, so that's pretty much a little bit about um, my son and me finding out about his epilepsy. Um, he is on Epidiolex which is actually um, a pharmaceutical grade of CBD. Um, mm -hmm. So at some point, I do plan on working with um, the people on Charlotte's Web, which is the natural yeah. CBD people. Mm -hmm. And I actually did talk to them already, love them. Um, they have a lot of suggestions, but they're not covered by insurance. So it does get pretty costly over time. So in a, when I'm in a place where I can like keep up with the natural stuff, I would like mm -hmm. to kind of be more natural for him. Um, but yeah, so that's just a little bit about Austin um, and his epilepsy. So, but now we're going to get um, into Kelly here and learn, you know, a little bit about her experience and her journey with um, living with epilepsy. So uh, the first question I have for her is how long have you been diagnosed? I know you said six, but um, if you want to just tell us again how long you've been diagnosed with having epilepsy and then the type of epilepsy that you have, if you want to explain it to us. Yeah, so I, um, I I will be 31 uh, this year, so that'll make it officially about 25 years being epileptic. Um, and when I was six, um, I spiked a fever, and that's what triggered my my seizures. Um, initially, the doctors um, thought that it was coming from my left temporal lobe, um, and when I when I turned 25, I went to Penn Medicine in Philadelphia, and they, with just an MRI and uh, an EEG, I did an inpatient EEG, so about four days I was hooked up, um, and they were able to figure out what was wrong. Um, and what I, what I had was a actual genetic type um, of epilepsy, however, it is not genetic in my family so it's just kind of rare okay. and it's a um type called subcortical band heterotopia and i <laughs> to, to to more i guess in layman's um double, double cortex i did take kind of more of a a uh yes uh, I have like the, the full definition because it's a little yeah. bit more complex. What essentially it 
it is is there's neural um, parts of my brain it, and it so subcortical band heterotopia um, also known as double cortex syndrome is a condition uh, of abnormal brain development which uh, is present from birth the condition primarily affects females occurs when neurons migrate to an area of the brain where there are not supposed to be and form abnormal areas that appear as band-like clusters of white tissue underneath the gray tissue of their cerebral cortex. Um, so basically it's developed the secondary cortex. And so it's, you know, in the frontal part of my brain um, and it's, it's blocking the neurons are not getting to where they need to go, which then trigger a seizure. With subcortical band heterotopia or double, double cortex, you can go from not showing anything at all your whole life to being completely disabled. Or um, in my case, you're just epileptic. Um, and it's it's kind of difficult. It's it's primary in in females because um, it affects that that change in in the gene. Um, the opposite version of my my condition, I guess you could say, would uh, if um, I were a male, it would be smooth brain syndrome, which then okay. you don't uh, you, you'd live only up to a couple of days, which is unfortunate. Um, but that's that's my official, you know, diagnosis that I've had, um, and and yeah, and it like I said initially it was, um, you know, six years old going up, um, it was kind of difficult to figure out where what you know what I had, and I went through so many different medications and and everything like that. Uh, right now I'm on five different medications. I also have a um, vagus nerve stimulator. So it's kind of like a, what I like to call a pacemaker for the epileptic. So it's basically um, like a battery that they, it's surgery. So I've had okay. this for, since I started going to pen medicine. So it goes, you know, from the heart, it's just, just right under the skin. It's a copper wire that wraps around the vagus nerve. And I, it's not generally most effective for adults, but I thought I'd try it to at least give me any option of reducing yeah. seizures. It's better for children. Okay. Um, it, it, and certain things like that, as well as you mentioned, Austin, you've been trying things like diet and everything like that. Um, from my knowledge, um, the ketogenic diet is the best. Yeah. 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 That's what we tried. I actually had to, uh, have a training for that with children's hospital. It was three days and I believe it was like three hours long. It was a couple other parents. So yeah, cause that diet is intense. So he kind of is on that diet now, not as intense though. Um, but he does a lot of soups and veggies, not a lot of meat, no milk, no cheese, gluten-free. I'm at Whole Foods all the time. Right. His cereal is gluten-free. Everything, you know, is gluten-free. But what I can say is um, I can tell it's made a difference. Yeah. Like, you know, I don't give my child, he doesn't get a whole bunch of junk food or red dye juice. I, I really try to stay away from stuff like that. And, and the fact that you said um, your fever is triggered seizures um, this is the first time, like, my son had a fever at the daycare that he was mm -hmm. at on Wednesday, and I think it was, like, 101 or something like that, and then that was, I that probably triggered, that's what they think in the hospital, is that mm -hmm. what triggered, because he's had fevers before, but I guess that fever at the time just made it a bigger seizure than he's ever had. It's so, possible. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's, I believe it's quite common when, uh, you know, when younger kids have high fevers that it's possible for them to have epilepsy or to have a, you know a seizure um so that that sounds you know pretty familiar yeah so and then so that actually takes us to the next question um what is the seizure 
Like, do you feel like, like, let's say beforehand, can you feel it coming on during and then like, you know, after, how do you have to take care of yourself after you have one? Today's a perfect example. Um, I uh, usually, I don't always feel, they're called auras. So like before, you know, you feel like you're going to have a seizure. I don't always have them, but there's times where I'll feel off. There's times where I'll feel like my hands are a little bit shakier than normal. Mm -hmm. um, I do um, use what I call my rescue medication. It's called a uh, clonopin. And it, um, I, I think it's also been called clonazepam, either one. Okay. I think uh, that's what Austin has. Yeah, so you just take, I'll either take a half or a whole and, and I'll feel okay within like 20 minutes. Um, okay. It's usually in times where like social or I don't usually have like social anxiety, um, but I'll feel kind of just off. Um, okay. What it feels like during one. Um, lately... Since I've been dealing with epilepsy for so long, I'm kind of aware and unaware during the seizure. And it's really difficult because I know that I'm having one, but there's nothing that I can do about it. Yeah. Um, there was at one point a couple months ago that I um, lost count of how many meds I had left for one of my like um, uh, medications I highly depended on. And I cut down that dose in order to survive to get my next. And that triggered uh, grand mal seizures. And my, um, and I was laying in bed and it was about one in the morning. And I knew that my fiance was downstairs and I felt like I couldn't breathe. I, I felt like I couldn't say anything. Although I was completely conscious through the whole thing. Um, wow. And so I shake. Um, I feel like I can't breathe. There's been times where, you know, obviously I you know, turn to your side. So my, my whole tongue has been pretty much chewed up over the years. Um, not to get too gruesome. But that's the reality of it. I'd rather have a chewed up tongue than not be able to breathe. Yeah. Um, and once I come out of it, um, it it's usually somebody who kind of like helps me and like just reassures me that, you know, I'm okay, that I can like, you know, that knowing that somebody is there is kind of helpful. Yeah. Um, and what I feel like when I come out of it is dizzy, tired. Uh, I have a very big headache. Um, okay. And I am bawling my eyes out because okay. I know that I have the seizure, but I there's nothing that I could do with it. Yeah. Um, it, it's tough. I mean, even, you know, even after having epilepsy for so many years, it, it affects your life. Um, and, you know, you've just got to work around that. Um, but it, 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 that, that mental feeling afterwards um, is, is pretty bad. Yeah. With absent seizures, I will know that I'll have an absent seizure. Um, okay. Generally, um, like you mentioned, um, how Austin just spaces out. Um, yeah. I actually call them space outs because that's yeah. that's pretty much what they are. Um, yeah. I've had them a lot during work, um, and it's just I just blankly stare off. Um, yeah. Or I've never fallen. So if Good, I'm yeah. I never fall, but I do let the people around me and my coworkers know that way they can kind of get a sense of it. Yeah. Um, there's been times where I'll be on the phone and have a space out and then completely forget that I was on the phone and then hang up. 
because I was like, wait, why am I on the phone again? Yeah. Uh, and with those, it it's kind of the same where you, you have a headache, you're a little bit disoriented. Um, yeah. And usually with those, I'm at least able to murmur out the words seizure or word seizure. Okay. So that's kind of where they vary. Um, but yeah. <laughs> I think Austin, the way he tells me is he has headaches, which his <laughs> therapist work really well with him with, especially since I told him that he has epilepsy, with him identifying his feelings and how his body feels and being able to let someone know around him too. Because also, you know, with him being autistic, sometimes it's difficult to, you know, to kind of maybe grasp because he has a speech therapist to get the words together on oh. top of like having an abs having absence seizures. So he's trying to like, you know, his brain is trying to do a lot in like a small um, period of time, but he's definitely um, working on that. So when you were a child, um, what were some challenges like in school um, that you had? And what was some of the help that you were able to get in school that was able to help you succeed? It really wasn't until um, maybe high school or college <laughs> that I started actually actively receiving help. Um, a lot of the times I was in denial, but when I did receive the help, it was extra time on exams, um, you know, uh, primarily that during high school, um, mm -hmm. just extra time. There was times where I would have a little bit of a space out during, um, you know, an exam. And I, when I have an absent seizure, I can't read anything. It's everything okay. is blurry. So I have to sit here. So I'm spending, you know, five minutes of testing yeah. time not taking the test because I just can't, I can't focus. I can't read. Um, and, you know, a lot of the, a lot of those tests are either like computer based or. Yeah. You said a lot of them are computer based. Are you still there? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm still here. No, you're, you're good. No, no, because a lot of the tests, like, I feel like a lot of the tests that we take, like, even on paper, I know for me, after I look at it for a while, I kind of, like, get out of my head where I'm like, okay, this is, like, a lot. So I can imagine having to re-kind of focus on, like, something. And, and I have anxiety, too, when it comes to time. Mm -hmm. So if I know I only have this much time and I'm just like, uh, so... Um, that's good that you were able to receive help. So in college, is that the same thing too, I suppose? Like with the time yeah, thing? You have to basically submit a form, um, from the doctor, from neurologist, anything to prove that, um, you know, prove that Austin, for example, um, you know, has epilepsy or needs these yeah accommodations so you know um extra time or um i can't think of any other ones at the moment but um you know i guess he, it would mainly yeah. be that and he needs breaks sometimes after his seizure yeah like yeah. trying to get himself together some water or yeah some air I mean, or something. that would be something that you could request as well you know having some breaks during the test like a snack or something like that um, oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> um, I never really dealt with a lot of it when I was younger. It was more of when I really needed it. Um, like when I was um, at my first semester at Temple, so it was after my semester at Ship, after my semester at um, Shippensburg, I started, I needed to take uh, methods courses for teaching lo and behold, I'm not teaching anymore, but, um, it did require, uh, a heavy amount of testing. Um, okay. And it got my seizures, 
going. It got my stress uh, level. My, my triggers are lack of sleep and stress. So being an adult. <laughs> yeah, um, that was my next question too. What what are your triggers? Because I know you said it was like at night, I believe as well, is when it would happen the most. But you said lack of sleep and pretty much stress. Yeah, lack of sleep and stress. That's just, um, it's not, a lot of people think that it would be like strobe lights. And it can be. Um, okay. It can be a trigger for some. Yeah. Um, there's also other trig like tonal triggers. So certain like types of music. Um, oh. so there, one of my exes at like seven in the morning used to listen to like this, uh, it's called like psy trance kind of music. Okay. And it would set me, it would set one of my, you know, it would set a trigger off. Um, so, but mostly, um, uh, stress and lack of sleep primarily now so you know being in it yeah that's how it is I feel like that's how it kind of is for Austin um a little bit like if he's if he's in a stressful environment because you know children and adults can feel stressful environments Mm -hmm. as well um so yeah that's interesting and um I think it's really important that we're talking about this like I said because I know I put on the flyer um that there are a lot of studies out there that show autism You know, it's linked to a lot of other things, but epilepsy Mm -hmm. is definitely one of those things that I think it said 15 or 12 percent of the children um, out of 6,000 children that were studied, like had epilepsy. And it was really important for me to get the diagnosis um, before the autism because I was able to get at least some help, like in some sort of way. And that help ended up helping out with the autism. Like, you know, it's all kind of tied to each other anyway. Um, So... You know, this is really important, too, so that the parents that can see this, if they do have children who are, like, on the spectrum, it probably is important to see a neurologist at least one point in your child's, you know, in your child's life. In my opinion, it's important to see all the specialists if your child is on the spectrum just to see what things, because we all have, our kids all have different things going on besides them being autistic. There's other stuff up under that that, you know, we can figure out to really help them, you know, not change them, but help, you know, better, you know, better life or so that you can get through certain things that would be harder if you didn't know. So um, that's why this is really important. I'm really glad um, that we're talking about this. So um, my next question, my last question, what would you want um, children living with epilepsy to know? Uh, It's a difficult one. Um, It's not something I, I really think about. Um, well, definitely going to things like, um, walks, you know, obviously I'm supporting the walk to end epilepsy. I've gone, except for 2020, um, I've gone in the last five years. Um, I haven't really missed one. Um, it's incredible to see how many people are either supporting or, or dealing with it themselves. Um, and it's it's something that you know, I mean, you you always hear you're not alone in this, but really you're you're not. Um, yeah. family members and friends and everybody who can help you during a seizure or help take care of you is incredibly important. My mother was always there. Um taking me to my appointments and always just like making me feel better. Um, Early on, um, you know, as a kid, you know, or for parents, you know, have um, children who, who have epilepsy like Austin, it's, it's important to experiment early um, to see what works for them. And it could always change, you know, as they get older. Like you had mentioned CBD, I do take CBD. I take probably the highest dose. Um, and sometimes it helps, but I rely yeah. more on my um, actual prescribed medication. Um, and so it really depends on, you know, what what kind of treatment you get to perfect that. And yeah. it's good to get that early on. Um so at one point, um, I think I was early twenties and I started, I realized, Oh, I could have done the, 
ketogenic diet and tried that. And then I realized, oh, that would be more effective for children. Um, so it's something that you just kind of have to work on. Um, and seizures can be really difficult. Feeling them can be very difficult. My Actually, the only time I've ever seen one happen, my border collie, my um, he passed away a long time ago, but um, my one border collie, Rio, was epileptic. And it was very difficult to actually see kind of what I went through, through another creature. Um, and uh. when he came out of it, I know it's not the same thing as a human, but when he came out of it, he looked like he didn't know where he was and he would snap at us, yeah. even though he knew who we were. Um, so it's, it, it's difficult to really deal with, but you just have to know that to have those people to get that medication right, to, yeah. you know, um, work with this. I, I, I apologize that the school didn't do um, what they needed to do yeah. for Austin, um, especially as a four-year-old. That's really difficult um, because it, it, for me, it does affect the brain. It does affect my emotions. Um, okay. Because I'll have that headache, but then... Um, Basically, every time I have a seizure, uh, I'll cry because yeah. it, it's not it's not a good feeling. So it's really important to have support. Um, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I um, I'm thankful for my son's one on one because that's how I knew he had the seizure. Mm -hmm. And um, he's, at, he's actually not going to be at that school anymore just because I cannot as like have peace really knowing because I also right. feel like he's had seizures there before because just from what you're telling me too about crying afterwards there's been plenty of times where like his teacher or someone will be like you know he's been doing a lot more crying today or certain things where it's like you guys know he have he has epilepsy so he was probably having seizures and this last time he had a seizure was just his biggest one you guys just didn't report it you know what I mean? So in yeah. my opinion, you were never reporting any of the seizures. And I just know because my son's one-on-one -on -one didn't know and she was scared and she called me. Right. So it's unfortunate. Um, but that's why it's like what you said. It's really important to have that supportive team. So now I'm turning my basement into like a school because it's kind of <laughs> big enough where I can have people here and his therapists are going to come here. Um, but his therapists are also working with me to put him in a, in a private school setting. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, my therapists love Austin. Like, they're really upset about this whole thing, too. Um, yeah. So they're just like, whatever you need us to do, if you need us to write a, a letter of recommendation, we'll help get him into a private school and, you know, we'll help set up all this stuff so that, you know, he can have that there. So even in situations like this, I'm thankful to have people like you to come out and show support and explain a lot of things that I just don't know and people like my son's therapist who you know are also showing that there are other ways that I can get him support and the help so right. and definitely doing research on medication um yeah can help I know that you know uh, neurologists are obviously trained in this sort of thing but there are times where um they'll give you medications and sometimes they don't interact well so yeah. it's important to see how um, like, for example, I don't take, um, actual pill birth control because it reduces the effectiveness of my epilepsy medicine. So, um, I've had to do, you know, research, um, you know, further based on that. Mm -hmm. Um, there, there are, um, medications that don't interact well with each other. Um, so you kind of have to find where that balances and what works and what you know um and what doesn't work um yeah and for kids it's difficult because it was difficult to find him a child psychiatrist because he's four mm -hmm. so i, I kind of have to get things like through a neurologist until he's a certain age but other people who have children like you know they can do stuff like that and i'm actually a part of this page on facebook which is children with epilepsy mm -hmm. and they talk about what you're talking about you can just see moms on there that's like you know we tried this but then 
this is what exactly what you said. Right. These two aren't working. These two aren't working. Or now I have to add this. Right. So yeah, yeah adding a group page definitely helps. Impact and on feed don't work together. I learned that the okay. hard way. <laughs> uh, I learned that the hard way. Um, and so it, it's kind of I'm on um I am on Amphi, I'm on Lamictal, Excopri, uh, Clonazepam, and a couple other just supplements that are supposed to help. Right. So I've even researched into kind of that natural aspect. because the holistic, yeah. The holistic. It doesn't hurt to look into both. Um, my fiance's parent or uh, father is, is very into the holistic side. And um, as, you know, questioned me, I'm like, have you ever considered, like, going full CBD? I'm like, nope. <laughs> I'm like, it can help. Um, but because I because that medication's been in my system so long, I'm not just, like. Yeah, you can, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, diff it's different for you because you're older. Where versus yeah. if you have a child like Austin's age, I can kind of start him off. And that's what the doctors were kind of trying to scare me with the mm -hmm. keto diet because they were saying if he was an older kid and I had to change his diet, it may be more difficult to get him yeah. on it. But I'm like, he's four now. He's going to eat whatever, you know, I give him and I can kind of program his brain, which mm -hmm. I already kind of has because now when he sees chips or just certain things, he'll be like, you know, that's unhealthy. And he rather oh. eat like, like fruit or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's what it took. Um, I actually, so it's interesting. I was talking to the Epilepsy Foundation on mm -hmm. Wednesday when my son's one-on-one -on -one called me about the seizure. So they called me back this week and they told me that they're having a conference on Saturday. So mm -hmm. I'm going to the conference on Saturday, but then they also told me that they provide trainings, which I didn't know. So they can actually go to schools or just go to places or if I wanted to just set up something and have some people trained about epilepsy and seizures, that's mm -hmm. something they do, which is really interesting because I'm like, wow, that's like a good idea. And it seems like it's necessary at least once a year in these schools or something right, like that, just right. so that people know. Yeah, we, we do kind of in, in the school system do lack a lot of that. I mean, we do, we kind of cover it like briefly but it's not really yeah. like touched on there was at one point before Shippensburg like when I got out of college so this would be around 2010 2011 um I was at Bucks County uh, Community Center for college and I went to a health class and we were touching on epilepsy and I she's like okay so how do you take care of somebody who's having a seizure and, you know, of course, me being epileptic, I raised my hand and answered her question. He said, no, that's wrong. And I'm like, excuse me? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, um, I got up and walked out. I was yeah. a little frustrated um, because she was not well versed on how to take care of somebody when somebody who is epileptic and everybody's different on how you take care of them. Obviously, you know, uh, an absent seizure versus a grand mal seizure is entirely different, but um, it, it's still, you know, as an epileptic being told that my answer was wrong was a little bit questionable. Yeah. So, <laughs> so um, I feel like, you know, we're being taught about all of these other conditions, you know, ADD, ADHD, the list can go on forever. But I feel like we really need to integrate, you know, epilepsy and go deeper into it. And even, you know, even autism, um, go deeper into that, at least a little bit in, in the school system. Yeah, it's so people aren't so surprised, you know? Yeah. You don't want to be surprised about something, especially if you know you have at least one child in the school that has epilepsy. Right. So yeah. at least send out a group email. Like what I've been doing, I've been finding YouTube videos of children who like experience, like, you know, they're little reenactments, but they have, they experience something and then they just show how a teacher should handle it. So mm -hmm. I'm literally sending that to like my son's teachers every time he gets a teacher just so that 
they can see it. But just because I send it, which as you can see with what happened to the school, doesn't mean that people will even oh. acknowledge it or want to, you know, if you know, take in what I'm saying. Yeah. So that's why so that's, it helps to have that. that's why it helps to have those different levels of support. Like yeah. like the Epilepsy Foundation. That that's helped, you know, greatly. Um just last year we raised over a hundred forty thousand dollars in support of epilepsy. Um and there were a lot of children there. Um, whether they had epilepsy or not, they were there to support somebody. Yeah. And it's really fantastic to see that sort of thing. Um, and to see it, it's all over, you know, Facebook and, you know, social media. And, and um, it's really nice to have those levels of support. So that way, you know, whether you are a parent trying to learn about it or yeah. a child or anything um or if you're just curious about it there's there's multiple i mean the epilepsy foundation website is even very well detailed um that yeah i love it is pretty much it sort of where i got it from um but it, it's definitely helped me feel happier knowing that i have that support Oh, I love that. I can't wait to get Austin in that little support group. I spoke to someone in there and they were just so nice just with everything kind of going on and calling me back and making sure they gave me the information. And um, so I'm excited. I can't wait to become a part of, you know, the team and contribute and share awareness. I know me and Austin definitely are. Um, so, yeah, I just want to thank you for coming on here. I know we kind of went over our time, but um, I loved everything that you said, everything that you said needed to be shared. I'm sure, you know, you've helped a lot of people. Um, this is going to end up on YouTube probably tomorrow. I'm going to be able to upload it. Um, so if everyone wants to see down there, it's change.org slash Philly Public School for Autism to sign the petition um, that we're working on. And um, I'm hoping that we get to have Kelly on here again um, to, you know, just talk Anytime more about. Anytime you need something for epilepsy. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So um, again, thanks for people. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. All right. Bye.